So first up, we have Reza Fazil um, Razi. He is a senior custom success engineer at MathWorks. Um, before joining MathWorks last year, he was in academia as a faculty for close to 20 years at different rates, with the latest position as professor of electrical engineering and a founding director of the biomedical engineering program. In his current role, he works with faculty, students, and, sci and <clears throat> scientists at different universities and research institutes to leverage the use of MATLAB and accelerating the pace of discovery, innovation, development, and learning in engineering and science. He is joined by his colleague, or maybe not, Rob Holt. No. Um, oh, not, okay, from MathWorks. All right, I'll let you take it away. If you wanna go ahead and share your screen. Sure, thank you. Okay, is it my screen share? I don't see it yet. Hmm. How about that? Oh, there we go. I'm, looks like it's loading. All right. Okay. So the screen is shared, am I correct? Yes. We, we okay, can see your slides. Great. Okay, okay, that's great. Uh, thank you for the introduction and uh, inviting me. Um, maybe uh, I'm gonna stop my video. I have a delay between video that I see and the audio make sure that it's not gonna create any problem. So um, today I'm gonna talk about MATLAB for open science in uh, MRI. Uh, I assume that many of you know what MATLAB is and I've worked with it, but just in case that you are not familiar, I have a very quick slide. I wanna talk about what uh, MATLAB is. MATLAB is our um, core product, is a leading environment for technical computing and it is the foundation of MathWorks product. Many people apply this uh, MATLAB to different applications, including signal processing, image processing, deep learning, uh, as well as MRI um, uh, research. Uh, Simulink is another uh, product of uh, uh, MathWorks that is used for modeling and simulating and implementing dynamical systems. And on top of these, we have toolboxes. There are more than um, 100 toolboxes uh, to add um, function for a specific area, such as signal processing, image processing, statistics, and so on. So with this introduction about <clears throat> MATLAB and MathWorks product, uh, I'm gonna talk about open science. Uh, and what is open science in the talk that I'm going to uh, discuss today? Uh, different people use different definition and they look at open science from different angles. One of the most comprehensive definitions that I uh, have seen is the definition on uh, in UNESCO recommendation for open science. This is a 36 page document uh, that is uh, that was published very recently. Uh, is quite um, long definition. I'm not going to read this, but in, in the same document, uh, they shared a picture uh, that um, summarizes the, uh, the definition. There are three main areas or three pillars for this um, uh, open science definition. One is in green focuses in increasing scientific collaboration and sharing of the information for the benefits of science and society. The second one uh, in blue addresses openly available, accessible and reusable aspects of open science. And the third one explains the scientific knowledge creation, evaluation, and usage should go beyond traditional community more openly. So these are, I summarize them in very simple picture uh, with three pillars. First, uh, foster collaboration, open availability, and lower entry barrier. Uh, now, uh, Let's look at MATLAB for open science. Uh, I listed uh, several features and main features of uh, MathWorks product and MATLAB. Uh, for example, live free apps, automation, code generation, and so on. And I try to 
uh, cross-check them with these three pillars. For example, live script uh, is something that you can um, is make your code available. You can create it easily. Uh, you can create uh, share it with others, and it is very easy to use. So uh, check all the three pillars. That's the same for um, automation code ge uh, generation app and uh, creating and sharing apps. I will discuss live scripts and apps uh, a little bit later. And for the rest of them, uh, if you look at these three pillars, MATLAB is actually uh, based on these three. Uh, try to uh, share, uh, you can share and, um, your codes and uh, what you have done with others. Uh, it is, uh, codes are uh, available. You can see the code and you can uh, create apps for it and also is uh, easy to use. You, didn't, you don't need to be very expert in that area to use um, many uh, programs. Uh, so I'm gonna show these uh, capability with the demo. The demo that I chose is uh, brain MRI classification uh, using deep learning. Uh, in this demo that I'm going to show, we're gonna use 2D brain uh, MR slicer uh, pass it to the deep learning uh, age classification and categorize uh, based on three ages. And we're gonna detect the ages of um, subjects in three classes. A little bit more about this demo. Uh, the data set is uh, collected by um, MR, uh, MIT researcher and uh, openly available. Uh, the demo is file um, exchange entry. Uh, that is publicly available. Let me show you how you can access that. Uh, if you go to MathWorks website, support, and search for MR classification, uh, you see <clears throat> different entry from application example documentation. And in the category of file exchange, the second example is what I chose to present today. This is, you can download the demo and you can look at the review, number of downloads, uh, downloads and so on. Um, in this demo, MATLAB, of course, and two toolboxes, deep learning and image processing are used and also a statistical parametric mapping, SPM is used for some pre-processing um, stages. So with that, uh, let me go to MATLAB environment and discuss the demo. Uh, I'm not gonna discuss the MATLAB environment. I assume that you uh, know, or you can learn it later because of the time. Uh, the demo is uh, in LiveScript. Uh, LiveScript is the, uh, an interactive document that you can uh, include um, um, rich text, hyperlink images and so on with your codes and tell the story about what you are doing. Uh, this is my, uh, make it more clear to others who are reviewing your uh, programs. Uh, about the demo uh, and what the objective of demo I already discussed, I wanna add just one more point that uh, there are only 155 participants in this uh, data uh, base and as you know this is not um, large enough for uh, deep learning network we're gonna see how we're gonna address that later there are <clears throat> different uh, steps in the workflow of uh, doing this uh, process uh, the first one is to access and explore the data so I'm I'm looking I'm gonna look at just one sample of the data, uh, one of the samples, and visualize it. Look at the data. Uh, the data uh, was pre-processed, as I mentioned, by this uh, toolbox. This is a community toolbox. Those who work in MRI uh, domain, they are familiar with this. Um, also, the data format is is uh, Nifty, and we can load it using Nifty Read in MATLAB. So uh, after uh, accessing the data and loading the data into MATLAB environment, we can look at different slices from this subject. Uh, 
uh, do some uh, visualization, make sure that it is the way that we want. Also, we can look at the 3D image of the, the slices. This, this is a plot from slice number one to what is indicated in here, uh, slice number three. And we can uh, do um, more exploration of the data. Um, more about uh, participant uh, that uh, is available through the database uh, as a table. Uh, as you see, there are uh, different information from participant ID, age, and uh, gender, and so on. Uh, in this demo, we're gonna use only the 3D volume as actually a slice of the 3D volume and the age. Uh, if you look at the histogram of the age of the participant, there are um, uh, in three main category. One is between three and six. Um, there is a gap here, another <clears throat> between seven and 12, uh, and also, um, the rest more than uh, 18 years old. Uh, the number of, uh, as a summary, the, there are 65 in the first category, 57 in the second, and 33 in the third category. Um, this is what we are going to use the deep learning and try to see if uh, there is a right uh, prediction or not. Uh, Taking a look at uh, one example from each category, you see the sample for age three and five, seven to 14 and adults. And one um, good feature that discriminates between these three is the skull uh, thickness. And this is based on the uh, literature. Uh, to make this demo more um, interesting and challenging, we're gonna remove the skull and look at only inside the brain for the classification. So uh, as a part of the pre-processing, uh, we applied the um, skull the stripping and that was done again using the SPM. Also to add, I mentioned there are only 155 images uh, or subjects, um, <clears throat> we apply augmentation. This augmentation, uh, we are gonna um, flip the image and add that as a new image. And that is um, gonna increase the uh, number of uh, 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 image that we have. Uh, most of the time we work with a large data set in deep learning and uh, maybe a lot of images more than many more than 155. Uh, one way, good way to uh, approach this is to use image data store. Uh, if you use the image data store, let me show you the document help page for this. Uh, it's going to read only one of the images. You can point to the folder that all images are there, but maybe not all of them can fit in your memory. So it's going to just load one uh, image in memory uh, not uh, loading all. When is needed, the other ones uh, will be um, loaded to the memory as well. That's the approach that uh, I use in this demo. So to show you just um, sample of the images after removing the skull, you see these uh, three samples of the images. Uh, we can update and look at other samples. Uh, so these are the images that will be used uh, for the classification in deep learning. As part of every deep learning uh, algorithm and design, we have to divide the images to training, validation, and test set. And that is done uh, using a split uh, each label. Now, we are done with the pre-processing and labeling uh, all the images. Now let's talk about the deep learning uh, network that we are gonna use. Uh, we're gonna use the uh, ResNet 18. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're gonna pre-train, this is pre-trained um, network, uh, but, and this ResNet 18, it, it has 18 uh, layers. It is, uh, 
it has two um, a million uh, images to the images and it is classified to more than 1000 uh, around 1000 uh, objects um, if we apply this image the brain image without any uh, pre-training and changing in the network it is interesting that it's going to detect the prediction as you see it is this sea animal so our network is not really intelligent uh, to, to detect that this is brain. And if we don't do the skull stripping and leave the skull around this, it's going to predict that it is the, uh, an analog clock. So that brings the uh, transfer learning concept that we have to do in this case to be uh, able to do a good um, prediction. In transfer learning, very uh, well-known approach, we're gonna remove the last uh, layers, uh, in this case, the last three layers. We're gonna replace our layer and uh, change some training uh, options and do our uh, training over the new network. For this, I'm gonna use App Designer. Um, apps are um, uh, graphical user interface in MATLAB that you can do a lot of uh, technical computation. So for this example, I'm gonna use the deep uh, learning app. So the first thing that in deep learning app is asking me to bring the network. So I can create a, a blank network and add all the layers. I can uh, import from workspace or I can use the pre-trained networks. In this example, as mentioned, I'm gonna use ResNet 18. I already installed it. If it is not installed, you can easily install that, uh, install the network. So if I bring the ResNet 18 network, <clears throat> this is the network. Let me zoom in a little bit, uh, all different layers. Um, you can look at different layers if you are interested in any layer. Uh, look at the um, different <clears throat> parameter for the layer. But as I mentioned, uh, in this, we're gonna remove the three, um, uh, last three layers and uh, add our uh, network. So let me go to the last three layers. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna remove these three layers. I'm gonna add a fully connected network. Uh, add a soft max. There are different layers that you can add for different application. Uh, a soft max and also a classification layer. Uh, and then connect your network. So our network design is complete at this stage. I, I can auto arrange to have a quick arrangement of the layers. So our network is ready. And the next step in our process is to import the data. And so I can import the data. Um, a window pops up here, so I can use a folder, or in this case, I have already have it in my workspace. Uh, I'm not gonna use all the images for the training. I'm gonna use a part of it, 212 image. And also I can do another augmentation, um, uh, let's say from minus 30 to uh, 30 uh, rotation. So I'm adding, uh, increasing uh, the number of images. And for the validation, uh, again, I'm gonna use the image data store in the workspace and use only uh, 52 images for the, uh, validation. Uh, I can import um, the data and then uh, change other parameter tra training parameter like uh, learning rate. I can make it a store or faster and epoch size and so on. After that, I, by just clicking on the train, the network is going to train based on the images that we provided. I'm not gonna do it now because it's gonna um, take a few minutes and we don't have time for that. But I um, did uh, the training before. During the training, 
you will see the changes in the training rate and the accuracy and the loss that we have. We can see the uh, training rate and the validation and how close they are to make sure that it's not over fitting the uh, model, uh, the, uh, the images that we have. In this case, I saved after this process, I saved it before and now I can load it and test the um, um, images that I had, the re remaining uh, images. Uh, the accuracy that I got is 95%, uh, which is not bad for this case. And only two images from uh, this class was mis uh, uh, Chris, uh, misclassified. Another interesting uh, option that we have, if you use the deep learning here, uh, the uh, deep learning toolbox, you can take a look at the occlusion sensitivity map. You can see exactly where your network was looking uh, to do this classification for uh, different confidence levels. So for 198 confidence level, you can see that these areas were uh, most interested. And you can look at for uh, other classes as well. Hey Reza, in the interest of time, you have um, one more minute, please. Yes, yeah. Uh, so that's it uh, for the demo. And let me go back to my um, PowerPoint. Um, so I talked about a lot of different features in MATLAB. Uh, you can take a look at these uh, open self paced open uh, self paced uh, courses, and they are available on MATLAB uh, website. Or uh, and you can do a deep dive on machine learning and deep learning. And that actually was my last slide. Um, thank you for your time and attention, and I would be happy to answer any question if you have. Um, thank you, Reza. Um, I do think there is a question in the chat here. Um, go ahead and read it. Dear speaker, I find it difficult to share MATLAB code because it is difficult to verify that other people have the exact, exactly the same versions of the core MATLAB and toolboxes. I know that MATLAB code can be compiled, but then it is impossible to modify the compiled code. Is there any way to make sure others have exactly the same product versions when running code that I share without compiling the code? Yeah, you, um, that's a very good question. So first of all, we uh, strongly that uh, you use the latest version because there are new features. We have two releases per year and the latest version has all different capabilities. Uh, that's the first thing, but always you can share the version that you are using most of the, if you run it, uh, the, run the latest version and you get the result, you can, um, uh, another way is just to create the app or uh, this live script where you can explain what you have done. Uh, so that's another way to verify against other uh, people's code. I don't see, sorry, I'm sorry, I don't see the chat. So if there is any uh, other question, could you read it or <clears throat> share it with me? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think in the interest of time, we are gonna move on to the next speaker, sure. but feel free once you stop sharing your screen, you should be able to see the chat. If anybody has any other questions, sure. um, go ahead, you can write it in um, and then you can respond to um, the participants as well directly. Sure, but thank, thank you. you very and much for your talk. Yeah, and this is my email. You can just reach out to me later as well. Thank you. Oh, perfect, thank you.